Now I know it's been a long time since we've done any real work on the T4. Um, and if you lower your van and you don't have weight in it, it's increasing the pressure to the rear wheels, which potentially will cause it to lock up on the rear. And by no means is this a tutorial. This is, um, this is just me going to swap this out. Right, well, before we get into this video, just want to make a quick disclaimer that um, <laughs> today we are working on the brakes. So if you're not competent in brakes, don't be doing this. So in today's video, quite an interesting one. What I personally think it's an interesting video. Um, I've never done one of these jobs before. I put a little post on Instagram and people were quite interested and quite keen to know what this item was. Um, and I'll show it. And before we go into it, I actually got this from Autodoc. Mate, in the past I've ordered from Autodoc, you're looking at like a two week delivery. I ordered it on the Friday and it was, um, it arrived on the Wednesday. <laughs> Autodoc, you've turned things around. That was madness, absolute madness. I wasn't expecting it to arrive that quick. And also, um, I've been looking around for prices for this item, for said item, and <laughs> some mad prices out there for this. But in the end, um, I was watching it on Autodoc, so I downloaded the app on Autodoc, um, and I found the item that I wanted, and I just, you know, I put it in my basket and left it at that. And I thought, well, I'll get round to buying it when I get closer to doing the job. Um, and then Autodoc, I had notifications turned on. They sent me a notification saying 37% um, discount today. So I went online and I bought it. And this was only £67. £67. 113 pounds cheaper than what's advertised with other known brands <laughs> here in the UK. Right, so what it is, this is a, um, a rear brake load compensator or a rear brake load um, bias valve. Uh, so in here, in here is a little valve. Um, <clears throat> so it will sit on the van like that. And along the back here will be a bar that's uh, bolted or you know sits on here little plastic cap nut underneath this can go up and down from this end here it will go up and down uh, depending on the load in your vehicle so hence why this is a load brake bias valve so this valve will open and close in here depending on how much weight is in your van and that's um, adjusted by there's some springs there's a bar that runs across here and then there's some springs we'll have a look at that when we get out there but basically this opens and closes and it opens and closes a little valve inside i mean it's quite stiff it's quite hard to move i can't really hold it still enough to show you but yeah you can see that's that opens and closes the valve inside okay so depending on how much weight is in there, so when you load your vehicle up and the vehicle goes down, this valve is going to open more to increase the pressure on the rear brakes. Now, what this does is it stops you from locking up the rear. Um, and I know nobody seems to adjust these when they lower their vans. Um, and the only way to set these up is to get your vehicle to standard height, and then you can set them up correctly so everyone who's got lowered vans um, you, you can't set these up correctly until you actually bring it up to height and then you can set up all the pressures the way of actually doing it correctly you need pressure gauges on the front caliper and on a rear caliper on the opposite corners I believe it is the front right and the rear left um, and then that way you can when you apply the pressure on the brake once it's all bled through it should give you the readings um, and Volkswagen have those readings. There's nothing in the Haynes manual. I can't really find a lot online about it. Um, it's been quite a struggle. So because this is quite, you know, it's a daunting job. It is something that if you're not familiar with brakes, it's something, you know, potentially you could be stranded. Your brake lines could snap whilst I'm doing these, the old brake lines. Um, I have pre-soaked all my last my ones out there. I've been soaking them over the last few days 
bit of WD-40 every day I've gone out there, sprayed them up, making sure that they're staying nice and wet. Hopefully to reduce the risk and the chance of snapping the brake pipes when we undo the unions. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit daunting. Uh, so I've done loads of research. Um, I know how I'm going to set it up or adjust it if needs be, but these are apparently preset and it should be a case of just unbolting the old one, putting the new one in, and as long as we don't make any adjustments on the springs out there, it should be completely fine. Uh, we'll get into how we're gonna test it later on, um, but a sh short story of, of it, on um, how I'm gonna test it, is basically, once it's all bled up and we're all good, I'm gonna drive down the road, apply the brakes, you know, about 15, 20 mile an hour, apply the brakes quite hard um, and see if the rear locks up. If the rear locks up, then we've got too much brake pressure going to the rear. Um, so then it, will, it would need to be adjusted to, uh, to compensate for that. But yeah, it should be, I say should be, but hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood and all that good stuff, it should be just a straight swap. This compensator for the old one, um, yeah. So when we jack the vehicle up, we should actually see movement in the old one. So as it goes up, the vehicle goes up, what it's going to do is it's going to close this valve so as it goes up well there's weight on there at the moment anyway so if we presume that there's weight on there and it's being it's pushed down like that then as we raise the van up this is going to close the valve then as that valve closes we might not be able to pick it up on camera we might i don't know but we'll get the camera underneath anyway and we'll see what movement there is as we jack the vehicle up Okay, there is also an Allen key under here, a little four mil Allen key bolt, um, which people have been using to adjust uh, this preset tension, but um, it should be preset. Uh, the reason why I know this is because I actually went down to the local MOT station, shout out to Bick again it's on uh, Instagram. A massive shout out to him, because I went down the garage to see what he said. Bit of advice, uh, and again, one of them, he said, anyone that's not confident or even competent in doing this kind of job, don't even think about it, you know, leave it to the professionals. At the end of the day, it is your brakes. So, I mean, I'm qualified. I'm qualified to do this, and I, yeah. I've got a certificate saying uh, I can do brakes. <laughs> right, let's get out the front and um, have a look, see how we're gonna get on with it. And by no means is this a tutorial. This is, um, this is just me going to swap this out and hopefully we can get it all done nice and easy. Apparently you want the valve open when you come to bleed it as well, makes bleeding a lot easier. Also people are saying to make sure that you have the rear of the vehicle jacked up when you bleed it because that will also make it a lot easier to bleed. I guess we will find out. Right let's get out there anyway. Ooh, oh, less waffle and more work. Right, so I've just been under here a few minutes. I've given it all a bit of a clean up, some more lube. Um, and the reason why I'm actually changing this one is because it was actually leaking. Um, I came under a little while ago and I noticed it was a little drip of brake fluid here. Um, but all these unions and pipes were quite dry. So all I can presume is, is that it was the cylinder was leaking. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and replace the whole unit. But now it's uh, jacked up into the air. You can see the, um, the actual springs and the whole unit around it is all now released off. Oh, it's very windy under here as well. But now we've released it, this has actually closed the valve to its like set position, um, which will reduce the amount of brake pressure applied to the rear brakes. Now obviously when we lower the van back down, that valve, 
So obviously as we lower the van back down, this valve is then going to open up to increase the pressure applied to the rear brakes. Um, and if you lower your van and you don't have weight in it, it's increasing the pressure to the rear wheels, which potentially will cause it to lock up on the rear under heavy braking. Um, that's why I didn't really want to go ahead and mess around with this too much, but apparently it's all preset. It should be a case of just swapping them over. But we've got this little plastic, um, this plastic like uh, wing nut is basically just holding this in. It's not tight. It's literally just to stop it from bouncing around because the weight of the van will automatically hold this in the actual clamp. So the weight of the vehicle pushing down and then this just holds it there. But you've got to be careful because everything is pretty much plastic. So I've cleaned it all up and you can see it's plastic everywhere. So you've got to be really careful because I presume it's all going to be very brittle. But this is what we need to get off. We need to remove these unions and the pipes without damaging the pipes. Yeah, so these ones run from the front. Um, run all the way along. Oh, and there's a connection right there. But then they don't look too good anyway. Uh, <laughs> and if I have problems with that, then that means the tank's gonna have to come down. So we wanna be as careful as possible removing these. Right, so I've just gone ahead and removed them three. This fourth one here, um, loads of rust fell off around it and the spanner doesn't actually fit on it. Uh, it's, it's not so much that it's rounded, it's just lost its size. And I don't have a nine mil, um, one of them kind of spanners. So what I'm gonna do is, so that I don't muller that union up, I've just cracked it off here and we'll remove that whole pipe along with the uh, bias valve. And then we'll, re we'll remove that in the vise. So all I've got to do now is just remove this plastic screw at the back here, this like little wow, plastic end cap. Just unscrews like that, and now that's all nice and loose. So then once I remove these two I think they're 13s. Once I remove those two bolts there, I'm gonna take the whole unit out and we'll have a look on the bench, getting that out. Right, so it is actually a good job that I brought this out and put it into the vise because removing and undoing this union, it's actually twisting and turning the whole pipe. So the union and the pipe are currently seized together. So hopefully if I can carefully take it all out, um, I'm gonna try and see, oh, gonna try and see if I can uh, free it up. Because there is a little bit of movement in it, a tiny amount, but I don't want that to snap. So, yeah, I'm going to have to very carefully carry on removing this.
Right, so we are now all good to bleed the brakes. So I filled up the reservoir because it was completely empty. I filled up the uh, bleeding system, got up to pressure. I've bled, well, I've pressurized it to about, was it about 15, 15 psi? And we will start at the furthest corner, away from the reservoir, which is the rear right as we're looking at it from here, or the rear left if you're sat in it. There it is, it's all done, all back together. It was uh, a little bit of a pain, not gonna lie. But it's just, <clears throat> it's just being cautious of those unions taking them out. Um, but we got all of that out. All that's left now to do is to take it for a test drive, make sure that the brakes are working fine. Um, I have just, <laughs> I got in the van and I pressed the brake. They're rock hard. So as far as I'm aware, everything should be fine. Um, it's getting dark, it's starting to rain. Need to get the van keys. We'll go for a test drive, test the brakes. Um, if it locks up when I apply the brakes quite hard, if it locks up on the rear, then I need to adjust that bias valve. Shouldn't be a problem, but if it does need addressing, we'll do that in a separate video on adjusting that. And what we'll do is we'll take it down to Bick, down at the garage, and we'll go through it with him. And we could probably see if we can get it onto their rolling road, onto their brake, brake pressures, and then we can see how much pressure is being applied to the wheels. That might be an idea. Perfect timing, rain. Well, I'm going for a test drive.